Now the all statement is a powerful function in DAX where it enables you to essentially remove filters that may be on a particular calculation or any result that you're uh, retrieving or um, or you're seeing in your in your data. So let's run an example here, and I'll show you. I'll show you exactly what um, what you can do with all. So let's uh, let's also let's first grab month and year here, and we'll turn it into a table. I always like to start with a table first because uh, it's it's uh, just so much easier if you can actually see the results you're getting versus being in some visualization. And especially if you're running more advanced calculations with um, calculate statements and and all functions in this case. So what we want to do is we want to we want to actually let's let's change it let's go let's actually put our customer in there let's put our customer in there now we want to see now if we want to see what is the percentage what is the percentage of sales for each of these customers now we need to go in that case if you think about it we need to go total sales divided by the total the total amount here 154 million now in its current state, we can't do that. We need to somehow, somehow enable this total to be on every single row so that we can actually then go and do that calculation. So to do that, we need to use the all statement. This is what the all statement is perfect for because we need to remove some filters here. We need to say, well, if customer names is filtered, if we have a filter on customer names or anything in the customer table, for example, we want to remove that filter and then just calculate total sales. And then that's going to achieve, that. what that's going to achieve is going to allow us to then retrieve this result on every single row. So if I go, if I call this all sales as, the, as an example, and I go calculate, and I place total sales because we're still going to calculate total sales, but we're just going to change the context of the calculation. If I place all here, we have a few options. We can either put a table name or we can put a column name in. So in this case, I'm just going to put the exact column name. I'm going to say uh, customer names. And if we push uh, enter there and drag all sales into our table now, you'll see that we're getting this result on every single row. And that is because of this all statement. It's changed the context of this particular calculation and this particular calculation and this result and this result and so on and so forth. What you place in here though does matter. It matters a lot because what could happen and it, it uh, what could easily happen is that you could have a, this customer um, data table could be larger and could have a number of other dimensions. And if you just place this, just this column name in here, it's only going to remove filters on that particular column, not other columns in the table. And so if you wanted to remove filters on anything in a particular table, you would need to remove, you would need to remove that column name altogether and reference the table. In this case, it's not going to change the result, but I'll show you how it could potentially in your uh, in your own data sets. So if I go all customer names there, and then instead of the customer name, the only other column I actually have in this table is the customer index. So I'm gonna sub it in there. And you'll see that all sales doesn't actually filter like it does over here. It's actually returning exactly the same result. Now check this out. I can change that by referencing the entire table in here instead of the column name. And now you'll see because every filter within that column, uh, within that table rather, now does not, um, it gets removed every single time. So that's the main usage of all and the, and the main considerations of all. And so uh, I guess you're probably thinking, well, why do you even need this calculation? It's pretty irrelevant, right? You need this calculation because now what we can do is we can create a new measure and we can say, percent we can go percent of sales and then we can use we can go divide we can go divide total sales by this all sales and if we turn this into a percentage we can see we can see we can see that now we get this result the percent of total sales now you could never get this calculation you can never get this uh, result through using DAX without this intermediary calculation in here you don't even need to 
uh, you don't even need to actually have this intermediary measure. I just use it as a way to showcase what you can do with all. You could, in theory, you could, in theory, actually uh, put this entire this entire measure actually in this calculation, and you're still going to achieve exactly the same result. Uh, so there's a number of ways you can slice it and dice it, but for, for, from my perspective, I from I, I truly believe it's much easier to manage if you are. Uh, building things out one by one and that's why I do that why I put all sales within a measure all by itself and then I can uh, fully understand what the calculation is doing uh, before I could then get the end result that I want so we could actually get rid of these and then now we can see from high to low uh, the percent of sales which go which are attributed to a particular customer or customer set hey everyone thanks for tuning in to enterprise DNA TV if you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.